I became principal of a school. They put me the furthest away from here. The first school that I went to was Kambangan. After a few times, few months, they called me up and they said, we are posting you to Bukit Panjang, near Woodlands. I said, I started to cry. Really, I was so upset because my children were small. I have to leave home by 6, 6.15 in the morning to go all the way to Bukit Panjang. I was there for one year. The following year, the ministry thought they would be a bit kind to me. All the same, they put me in Yochokang Primary School as principal. Anyway, that too is quite far, but it's on this side, you see, not much traffic. So I was there for one year. Every time they brought me nearer and nearer home, they were considerate, but they were very clever too. Make me. So I went to Yochukang after one year. Then they brought me to Bidok Primary School near the home. That was a great relief for me. Anyway, that the school had a lot of problems. There were three schools: Bidok Girls, Bidok Boys, and then my school on the hill, Bidok Primary. And my school had all those. Those days we had monolingual class. Boys and girls were 15, 16. Uh, they can't do very well. And they were huge fellows, you know. And before I went, it seemed they were so naughty. They used to puncture the tires. You know, they are overage and all that. They cannot, they are in the monolingual classes, they call it, those days. So I said, my God, I am being put here. So when I went there as a school principal, the senior teachers, they used to tell me, we get punctures in our cars nearly every week. You have to do that. I said, I will see that I'll stop that. So I brought in so many rulings and all that. It's all one-to-one, -one, like, you know, every day I will be at them. And every Monday, the assembly talks, I hint at the boys and the girls and the teachers as well, that they have got to wake up. They've got to see it, so I was really after them. And then we had glue sniffing at that time. A lot of boys used to have glue, some, something which they get from the petrol kiosk, and they would bring along to school. I said, no nonsense, I'm not having all this. Every morning I go there, I check, I tell the, I put the senior teacher in charge, he's a man in charge of the class. And take out all their pocket things and all put it on the table. I don't want to see anybody with this glue sniffing thing. So I cleared all that. No punctures, no glue sniffing, no nonsense in the school, the mono classes and all that. So what I did was I told the big boys, 15, 16, 17, some of them, I said, you have to do well. So I put this disciplined teacher in charge of the class. And she, oh, those days, the Ministry of Education also was a bit too much. We had to prove to them that we have progressed, you know. So I made my school totally English. Of course, Malay is second language and uh, Chinese. I didn't have Tamil because there were no Tamil children. Then I got the teachers. Some of the Malay teachers were good. I said, come, you do your old level. I can transfer you to the English stream, your pay will be better. They had different salary schemes for the uh, non-English teachers. So I made them do O-level. Those aspiring ones, they agreed. Some don't want to do. So I slowly got rid of them, transferred them. You know, there's a way of doing things, you know, you must play your game, no solar. So I got them out. So I, all English teachers, the Chinese teachers, I did the same. My music teacher was a Chinese teacher, but she's very good in teaching music. So I told her, you go and do your O-level English. I will back you up. I will transfer you to the English stream. So we did that. So that way I progressed and my school made very good results. So we were almost nearly 100% passes for primary six and the mono classes passed. The enrollment was small, but still the boys passed and they were going into like 
technical side of in the poly they were able to go. In the Tamil school, my grandmother would go around the classes and all the children would stand up and greet her and the teachers would greet her and all. So as small as I was, I used to be, when will I get into that shoes? And so I fulfilled it as a principle. When you walk around, the children stand up, the teachers stand up. Assembly, you talk, they're all there. No, and you give a talk, they're all listening to you. Of course, I moralize a bit, you know, when I talk. So I had reached that, and I was happy.